Good evening, I'm back. I'm your host, Jack Remington, of the Jack Remington Plug and Analyst channel. Today's video is titled, The One Reason Why They Do Not Want Donald Trump to Win in 2024. Not one person I ever ask this basic question gets it right. Not one time. But before I post that one reason, I need to do the Remington Roundup and I have two special goodbyes to two very special people that passed recently. The first is to Olivia Newton-John. Uh, Olivia Newton-John was a British-born Australian singer, actress, and activist. She was a four-time Grammy winner whose music career included five number one hits and another top ten. Uh, she passed August 8th, 2022 in San Ynez, California. That's like 70 miles from me. It's on the northern border of Santa Barbara County and the southern border of San Luis Obispo County. She had a daughter, Chloe Rose Latanzi, and her three biggest songs were Hopelessly Devoted to You, You're the One That I Want, and Summer Nights Off Greece. The physical album from 1981 was number one best-selling album. It was a pretty good album. And I loved her because of Greece, her and John Travolta. I mean, she knocked it out of the park. And then a lot of the parts were filmed in Mexico and Baja, California. Thank you for your contributions to music and television. And you were a very nice person. Never heard anything bad about you. You didn't get famous through other people's means, if you know what I mean. Rest in peace, Olivia Newton-John, and God bless. The next one, we want to say goodbye to Nichelle Nichols. She played Lieutenant Uhura on the Star Trek show, the original series from 1965 to 1968. Uh, I'm only going to read the part about her continuation of the series because she was going to quit. So let me read this from Wikipedia and you can look it up. On Star Trek, Nichols is one of the first black women featured in a major television series. Her prominent supporting role as bridge officer was unprecedented. Nichols was once tempted to leave the series, however, a conversation with Martin Luther King Jr. changed her mind. Towards the end of the first season, Nichols was given the opportunity to take a role on Broadway. She preferred the stage to the television studio, so she decided to take the role. Nichols went to Roddenberry's office, told him that she planned to leave and hand him her resignation letter. Roddenberry tried to convince Nichols to stay but to no avail, so he told her to take the weekend off and if she still felt that way, that she should leave and that he would give her his blessing. That weekend, Nichols attended the banquet that was being run by the NAACP, where she was informed that a fan really wanted to meet her. And these are her words. I thought it was a Trekkie, so I said, sure. I looked across the room and whoever the fan was had to wait because there was Dr. Martin Luther King walking toward me with his big grin on his face. Yes, that Dr. Martin Luther King. He reached out to me and said, yes, Miss Nichols, I'm your greatest fan. He said that Star Trek was the only show that his, he and his wife, Coretta, would allow their three little children to stay up and watch. She told King about her plans to leave the series because she wanted to take a role that was tied to Broadway. I never got to tell him why, because he said, you cannot, you cannot. For the first time on television, we will be seen as we should be seen every day as intelligent, quality, beautiful people who can sing, dance, and go to space who are professors and lawyers. Dr. King Jr. went further, stating, If you leave, that door can be closed because your role is not a black role, and it is not a female role. He can fill it with anybody, even an alien. Which was true. King personally encouraged her to stay on the series, saying she could not give up because she was playing a vital role for, for black children and young women across the country, as well for other children who would see black people as appearing as equals, going so far as to favorably compare her work on the series to the marches of the ongoing civil rights movement. This response by King left Nicole speechless, allowing her to realize how important to the civil rights movement her role was. And the next day, the very next day, she went back to Roddenberry's office to tell him that she would stay. When she told Roddenberry what King had said, tears came to his eyes. Nichols asked Roddenberry for a rollback, and Roddenberry took out, he took out her resignation letter, which he had already torn up into pieces. I think that's extremely important. I hope this part of history doesn't get re-erased by this wokeness and everything else. I thought she was pretty cool. We accepted it right away. We did not think that, oh, what's this black lady doing on the deck of the, the USS Enterprise? We didn't think that. I mean, we were small kids, easily influenced by our surroundings. I mean, it, it, it never occurred to us. And she'd already won the battle. We say a heartfelt goodbye to, to Nichelle Nichols, whose contributions to uh, cinema and television will never be forgotten. It had one of the most profound influences in the history of the medium. Okay. Remington Roundup, part two. Why am I in a different mood today? I took the can away. I did something I normally don't do. I had a beer the other night because Tin Dizzy Lizzie Cheney got trounced in Wyoming in the primary for Republican nomination for the race in November for the midterms. I, I, I'm just over the top. I just, I'm just so happy. And to make things worse, she can't concede gracefully. She has to compare herself to Abraham Lincoln. Well, Abraham Lincoln lost his first couple of races before he won the one that counted. All candidates for office to accept honorably the outcome of elections. 
And tonight, Harriet Hegeman has received the most votes in this primary. She won. I called her to concede the race. This primary election is over, but now the real work begins. The great and original champion of our party, Abraham Lincoln, was defeated in elections for the Senate and the House before he won the most important election of all. Lincoln ultimately prevailed, he saved our union, and he defined our obligation as Americans for all of history. Speaking at Gettysburg of the great task remaining before us, Lincoln said that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. As we meet here tonight, that remains our greatest and most important task. Most of world history is a story of violent conflict, of servitude and suffering. Most people in most places have not lived in freedom. Our American freedom is a providential departure from history. We are the exception. We have been given the gift of freedom by God and our founding fathers. It has been said that the long arc of history bends toward justice and freedom. That's true, but only if we make it best. To ensure that freedom will not perish, to protect the very foundations of this constitutional republic. Never in our nation's 246 years have we seen what we saw on January 6th. Like so many Americans, I assumed that the violence and the chaos of that day would have prompted a united response, a recognition that this was a line that must never be crossed, a tragic chapter in our nation's history to be studied by historians to ensure that it can never happen again. But instead, major elements of my party still vehemently defend those who caused it. At the heart of the attack on January 6th is a willingness to embrace dangerous conspiracies that attack the very core premise of our nation, that lawful elections reviewed by the courts when necessary and certified by the states and electoral college determine who serves as president. If we do not condemn the conspiracies and the lies, if we do not hold those responsible to account, we will be excusing this conduct, and it will become a feature of all elections. America will never be the same. Today, as we meet here, there are Republican candidates for governor who deny the outcome of the 2020 election and who may refuse to certify future elections if they oppose the results. We have candidates for Secretary of State who may refuse to report the actual results of the popular vote in future elections. And we have candidates for Congress, including here in Wyoming, who refuse to acknowledge that Joe Biden won the 2020 election and suggest that states decertify their results. Our nation is barreling once again towards crisis, lawlessness, and violence. No American should support election deniers for any position of genuine responsibility where their refusal to follow the rule of law will corrupt our future. You know, she's comparing herself to Abraham Lincoln. Honest Abraham Lincoln. Really? Oh, man. She's like the rest of the other loony liberal lefties and everything else. She's not going to go away quietly. So I'm going to have to do, my, do what I do best and really bring up some more dirt and stuff and start whining and complaining myself. Twice a month, I'm going to put a video about Liz Cheney on YouTube. And I'm going to remind the world, I want to tell the world, hey, look, she's going to try to run as a, as a Democrat now or independent, what she's going to do. She wants to run for president. This is not good. She just, she just got trounced by her opponent by 37 points. It's a landslide demolition, a complete fail. And now she's going to run for president. The arrogance of this person, I can't overstate this enough, but 10 Dizzy Lizzy lost by over 37%, a total ass beating. She was counseled by House Minority Leader Mr. Kevin McCarthy, who warned her and also other not so prominent GOPers. Liz Cheney was misled by her father, dead eyed Dick Cheney, played a fool by the DNC. Her ultimately, her hubris and catastrophic collapse was her own ego. Having an ego is something that people bitch about Donald Trump having an ego, but they, they turn around and have an ego that, that they cannot back up. Like him, love him, hate him, or don't care about him. Donald Trump backed that ego up and then some. 
10 Dizzy Lizzy had to have been pulled aside and given proper counsel by at least one person. And that's how it got to me. Quote, it might be time to let this go, Liz. You are not the FBI who published this article, and I'm going to put up here, back in February 2021, that Trump's phone records, emails, all communications that were traced and linked to him and his family members and his staffers and trying to indict him to this insurrection is not going to come true. It didn't happen. Time to let it go, Liz. End of quote. I am not making this up. I'll put more information in the next video. Do you remember Democrat Senator Lloyd Benson from Texas during the vice president debates between him and Dan Quayle? It was 1988. It's when uh, Reagan had to retire, and and so uh, George H. W. Bush was the was the eventual nominee, and he picked Dan Quayle because Quayle's father was a, a filthy rich, and he didn't put my son as, as the VP. Sure, uh, but Lloyd Benson was a pretty good senator from Texas, even and, uh, even though he was a Democrat, but. He, he wasn't a bad senator. He was he actually actually quite good for his state. What I'm, notice what I'm saying here. He's a Democrat. And he was good for his state. Okay. Senator Byrd. Yeah, he was. I know he was a grand Cyclops, Imperial Wizard, Dragon for the KKK from West Virginia. But he was good for his state. He was one of the best senators around at the time. Yeah, he was a Democrat. And he, he was a bad guy for a lot of reasons. But he was good for his state. He helped West Virginia. Was at one time was the poorest state in the country. Okay, back to the article. I'm, I, I digress. Oh, I apologize. Let me play the clip between Mr. Benson and uh, Mr. Quayle. I have as much experience in the Congress as Jack Kennedy did when he sought the presidency. Senator, I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. That was really uncalled for, Senator. <laughs> You're the one that was making the comparison, Senator. Okay, so how about this one? I'll do my best uh, uh, voice imitation of Mr. Benson, although I, I, I can't do voices anymore like I used to. You're no honest Abe Lincoln. You're more like my name, Arnold, Tin Dizzy Lizzy. But hey, Tin Dizzy Lizzy, now you have time to confess hunting with your daddy, dead eyed Dick Cheney. And I'll put that on my next video. And you can stop pretending to be a Wyoming resident and clean out a closet in your McLean, Virginia home you've had for over 26 years. And it's people like you that turned rural Virginia, my former stomping grounds, into the purple state it is now. Why am I mentioning this part? Well, you won't, have, you won't be seeing many Trump or Maggot yard signs in Fairfax County because it's a, it's a blue purple state now. So that, that you won't be getting too triggered now. So on a more serious note, 10 Dizzy Lizzy Cheney, I'm going to put a video up at least twice a month more of time permitting about you. Why? I am not going to let the American people forget what a traitor you are. Okay, now you compare yourself to Abraham Lincoln, honest Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln then destroyed the GOP because he was mad at somebody in his party. Oh, by the way, this pot to my head is not in the script. I'll make it quick. Abraham Lincoln was the first American president in his history up at that time. There were only 16, he was the 16th president. He dropped Hannibal Hamlin, the Republican vice president, he was from Maine, dropped him from the ticket over ideological differences. And he put Andrew Johnson, who was a Democrat. You could do that in those days. We'll, we'll put Andrew Johnson on the, on the vice president ticket. And when Lincoln got shot, Johnson became president. And they impeached him <laughs> for something that he did what was right, by the way. A different video for a different day. So, but a big difference between Honest Abe Lincoln and Liz Cheney right off the bat is Abraham Lincoln, he didn't destroy the country by destroying his own party. Whatever problem he had with someone in his party, he dealt with it man to man and didn't bring in the other people. There was no revenge politics. Liz Cheney is nothing ab about Nothing but revenge politics, and just like her father. Think about that. Liz Cheney, you have turned this January 6th skirmish, not an insurrection, okay? And let me quantify that, okay? Let me qualify this, okay? This so-called insurrection that you keep saying that Donald Trump organized and, and ordered, there were, there were no tanks, no guns, no smoke bombs, no knives, no actual killing people and taking hostages, etc. into a personal political revenge crusade against Trump is what you did, Liz Cheney. When both you and your dad, dead-eyed Dick Cheney, got on TV and said that Trump was a threat to our democracy, I'm going to fix those words into the true translation right now. Quote, when you keep saying that Donald Trump was a threat to your democracy, no, Donald Trump was a threat to your father's reputation and your money. Okay, he stopped, he stopped your money. Okay, you're on Nancy Pelosi's side about the money. And I'll get to that in a bit. Okay, now I got that the good stuff out of the way. Let me clue you all to the one, clue all the world, the one reason they, okay, the D.C. swamp, their institutions, their think tanks, the mainstream media, Hollywood, the elites, everybody, you know who they are. Okay. They will not allow Trump in the White House keys to 2024. Just the same reason in 2016. Ten words. Only ten words. Ready? Pay attention. Here are those ten words. 
Trump refused to rubber stamp obscene tax and spending bills. That's it. Donald Trump exposed these grifters for what they truly are. Okay, here's that famous video that, that gets a lot of play. I might not even get a, get a content strike for this, but I'm going to play it anyway. And I don't think we really disagree so much. I also know that, you know, Nancy's in a situation where it's not easy for her to talk right now. And I understand that. And I fully understand that. We're going to have a good discussion and we're going to see what happens. But we have to have border security. Please don't characterize the strength that I bring to this meeting as the leader of the House Democrats who just won a big victory. But let me, let, me just, let me just say, and that's let me just say this. Really so well. What the president is representing in terms of his cards over there are not factual. We have to have an evidence-based conversation about what does work, what money has been spent, and how effective it is. This isn't about, this is about the security of our country to take an oath to protect and defend. We don't want to have that mischaracterized by anyone. And I we agree are, with and we are no, no, I agree with we are So let us have a conversation where we don't have to contradict in public the statistics that you put forth, but instead can have a conversation about what will really work and what the American people deserve from us at this uncertain time in their lives where One they have apprehension. One thing I think we can agree on is we shouldn't shut down the government over a dispute. And you want to shut it down. I, you no, keep no, talking no, no. about it. The last time, Chuck, you shut it down. No, no, no. And then you opened it up times. very quickly. And 20 times. I don't want to do what you did. 20 but times Chuck. you have called for, I will shut down the government if I don't get my will. None of us have you said You want to know something? You've said Okay, it. you want to put that you on my You said it. I'll take it. Okay, okay, good. You know what I'll say? Yes. If we don't get what we want, one way or the other, whether it's through you, through a military, through anything you want to call... I will shut down the government. Okay, absolutely. absolutely. And we I disagree. am proud, and I'll we tell you disagree. what, I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. The last time you shut it down, it didn't work. I will take the mantle Look, of shutting down. And I'm going to shut it down. For border but security, you shouldn't okay. shut down. But you Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> this is so easy. I mean, I'm almost ashamed making this video. The ten words that why they will not let Trump get the White House in 2024. Why they fight him so hard. Ten words. Ready again? Trump refused to rubber stamp obscene tax and spending bills. That's it. He vetoed every big spending bill, and I believe it was 18 or more. In four years, they kept trying to sneak across his desk. That's the president's prerogative. That's the power of the presidency. As Barack Obama said, elections have consequences. Well, yeah, they sure do. And the American people got sick of the Obamas and Clintons, and they put in Donald Trump in 2016. Of course, they, they let the mainstream media do other things and got Trump out in 2020. But And he hasn't even announced if he's going to run yet or not. He may, not, he, he may be playing everybody for a fool himself, you know, and uh, the, the thing that they keep bitching about him for. But they'll put up with that. They'll, they'll gladly put up with being played by a fool for Trump if he doesn't get the White House because then they can just steal and steal and steal and spend more all, all they want. Thanks for sticking with me. It's always a great day to be an American. Stay tuned for the next video. Please like, share, subscribe. Make some comments on these videos. Let's blow this channel up. Let these clowns know that we're tired of wasting our money. We're tired of spending our money. Always a great day to be an American. Thank you.